identified strongly with the party as drops in an idealist era. In the 1950s, again a civic era, 40% of the voters thought of themselves as either strong Republicans or strong Democrats. By the 1970s, only a quarter thought of themselves as strong Republicans or Democrats. In the 1950s, believe it or not, two-thirds of the voters actually could say that they had a positive attitude toward one or the other, maybe both political parties. So Democrats could find nice things to say about Republicans sometimes. Republicans could say nice things about Democrats. Um, you don't find that. By the 1970s, less than half of the electorate would be willing to say that. We now are moving toward another civic era in an election, an election process where both candidates, both uh, Obama and McCain, actually have more people saying that they are fa have favorable attitudes toward each of them than negative attitudes. That hasn't happened in years. It's, it's, it's a very rare thing. At this point, more people are positive about Obama than McCain, but again, both of them are above the 50% mark in favorable attitudes. Obama is closer to 60 or 65%, McCain maybe 50 to 55%. But again, a very rare thing when people can look at both candidates and say, you know, they're both okay, they're both pretty decent. That didn't happen in even as recently as 2004. Republicans could never say anything nice about John Kerry, and Democrats would never say anything nice about George W. Bush. Maybe most important, what we see is that attitudes in idealist eras toward government, toward political institutions, tend to be negative. In the 1960s, early 1960s, this was around when JFK was president, two-thirds of voters believed that public officials care about what the people think. 80% uh, believe the government is run for the benefit of everybody. Can you imagine, I mean, just think about how people feel now and think about this is America in, in the early 1960s. So this is what it, America has been like. In, in, 19, in 2006, only a third believe that the people, rather than special interests, run the show. And most scary, only 10% believe that politicians, government officials, care what most people think. Those are the attitudes I think we're all kind of used to seeing right now. But in the civic era, it's actually different. What we would expect to see is that these kinds of attitudes by 2012, 2016 are actually going to start improving. Even if times are bad, people are going to start to feel that the institutions are at least working in their benefit and have more positive attitudes toward them. So this year's realignment is going to be a civic realignment. The first civic realignment, it wasn't voting, it wasn't elections, but it was a civic realignment because it involved the, the American Revolution, it involved the creation of the American Republic that we know today. So certainly about a civic, it involved the creation of all the institutions we're familiar with. 1860, I mentioned this, the election of Abraham Lincoln resolved not only the slavery question, but in a kind of fundamental way, it resolved the issue of whether the federal government or the state government was ultimately supreme. And the ruling was that we couldn't be, as Lincoln said, half slave and half free, that the federal government would have to be predominant. In this instance, it was the federal government that was going to run things. We also saw, for the first time, some real governmental activities at the federal level, things like the Land Grant College Act, uh, the Transcontinental Railroad Act, the idea that the government would start to get involved in the economy to try to make the economy work a little bit better. 1932, the election of FDR furthered that very clearly, the idea that the government is, has a responsibility to guide the economy, to try to keep things as stable as possible, to provide at least a floor beneath which people can't fall uh, economically. Uh, and we're seeing a return to that sort of thing, obviously, in the last several weeks. Can you imagine? Uh, nationalizing banks in America. Not two, two or three weeks ago, a year ago for sure, there's no way we could have even imagined such a thing happening. It sort of happened now and it, nobody even barely commented on it. And that's again an example of a return to a civic era which we expect 19, uh, 2008 to be. So civic realignments come from the uh, coming of age of a generation like the millennials they are not concerned with personal morality so much and culture of, a previous, of the previous era, so we don't see as much concern with social issues, but rather we are concerned with revitalizing civic institutions. 
We also see uh, a, a revision, a focus on res resolution of longstanding economic issues uh, and the expansion of governmental institutions. I just mentioned that. Morley will talk a little bit about how economic inequality tends to go down in civic eras, up in idealist eras. Interestingly, in our book, what we did, we talked about the two civic realigning presidents, the two presidents who had led civic realignments, Abraham Lincoln and Franklin Roosevelt. This is the most recent cover of Time Magazine. Kind of interesting that they sort of picked up on this. The idea that there might be a certain presidential leadership type who, uh, that is most effective during an era of, uh, of, of crisis that brings about a civic realignment. And they're asking the question, which of these two gentlemen is most likely to be that type of leader? In our book, we describe what presidential leadership or leadership generally involves. And essentially, it, it is a, a situation where somebody has a vision about where he wants to take America and the ability to move people to follow that vision where the, when they wouldn't necessarily want to do that. And I'll leave it up to you to decide which of these two people is most likely to have that ability and have that vision for America. But which of these two, McCain or Obama, is most likely to be our next FDR and, uh, or our next Abraham Lincoln? Um, it's somewhat of a rhetorical question, of course. And uh, I can only tell you that um, the Chicago Tribune, which was Abraham Lincoln's paper, for the first time in his 161-year history, endorsed the Democrat for president uh, yesterday. So I think, and mentioned that Democrat having Lincoln-esque qualities about him. So I, at least we know how the Chicago Tribune would answer that question in any case.